first of all, metabolic health, we've all heard the term metabolism uh, a lot. It is it is a buzzword. It is a word that we hear perhaps too often and even even to the point that it's often misused. Metabolism, just to be very precise, is the balance of all of the chemical reactions that are happening in the body. There are biochemical reactions in every cell that are trying to build up molecules. Those are called anabolic reactions or anabolism. And there are chemical, biochemical processes that are degrading molecules, breaking them down. That is catabolism. And metabolism is the fusion or the balance of all of those things, the sum of all of those reactions. Now with metabolic health, uh, now we're starting to get more specific to the topic. There are generally, in my mind, two ways that we can define metabolic health. So the first definition is simply defining metabolic health or explaining it through the lens, looking at it through the lens of the metabolic syndrome. You've certainly heard of metabolic syndrome before. And it's nice to start with metabolic syndrome because that gives us some of the best statistics. As much as we're going to invoke and invite other ideas and principles throughout this lesson, unfortunately, they are a little more obscure to the point that there just isn't as much population or global level data. So if we start with the definition of metabolic health as some aspect of the metabolic syndrome, it helps us understand the scope of the problem, which is significant. The metabolic syndrome affects roughly half of all adults across the entire planet. That makes the metabolic syndrome the single most prevalent disease or health disorder in the world. That's why this topic matters so much. It's why I have, why I feel so justified and even gratified in having focused on metabolic health as a scientist for my profession, because it matters so much. The scope of the problem is so vast. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of complications, in particular, five disorders that were noticed over the years to always clump together. They are in no particular order, a bunch of highs and a low. So high blood glucose, high waist circumference, high triglycerides, high blood pressure. Those are the highs, the four highs. And then lastly, the one low, low HDL. So let's just revisit those each very, very briefly. So the high glucose, that's no surprise. That's a sign of poor metabolic health. Your body's having a hard time clearing the glucose as you eat it, as you put it in your body. It's just lingering too long. And chronic hyperglycemia is pathogenic. It will certainly hurt the body. It can damage blood vessels and it can damage neurons and more. So that's important. High waist circumference. That invokes or evokes rather this idea of storing fat more centrally, particularly in the visceral space. And in future metabolic classrooms, we will revisit that topic, talking more about fat depots, where we store fat and why that matters. Um, but more visceral fat is reflective of or contributes to higher inflammation and more general met poor metabolic health. High triglycerides is a feature of the metabolic syndrome. That's the next one. And it is a very, very good predictor of heart disease risk. That's influenced by metabolic health. As the, as the uh, liver starts to suffer, uh, it begins to overproduce triglycerides. At the same time, skipping one down, it starts to increase the clearance of HDL cholesterol, reducing HDL levels considered to be the good or the beneficial version or carrier of cholesterol. And then lastly, it was the high blood pressure, which is directly related and, and a consequence directly derivative of metabolic health. So those are the five, the cluster of complications that make up the metabolic syndrome.